The Serbia national football team Serbian, Futbolska Reprezentacija Serbij, Futbolska Reprezentacija Serbij, represents Serbia in association football and is controlled by the Football Association of Serbia, the governing body for football in the country. With the national team nicknamed the Orlovi, Orlovi the Eagles, football has a long history in both Serbia and neighbouring countries. Serbia competed under the various forms of Yugoslav national teams, where it achieved considerable success, finishing fourth at the 1930 and 1962 World Cups respectively. Considered by FIFA and UEFA to be the successor of both the Yugoslavia and Serbia and Montenegro national teams, the achievements of the promising team of the 1990s which featured players such as Dragan Stojkovic, Dejan Savicevic, Predrag Mijatovic, Vladimir Jugovic and Sinisa Mihailovic was somewhat curbed due to international sanctions imposed against Yugoslavia at the time due to the Yugoslav Wars. Following the dissolution of Serbia and Montenegro, Serbia has played as an independent nation since 2006, and qualified for the World Cup in 2010 and 2018. The home ground of the national team is the Rijko Mitic Stadium of Red Star Belgrade, located in Belgrade. Their home stadium can also be the Partizan Stadium as well. Both FIFA and UEFA consider the Serbian national team to be the direct and sole successor of the Yugoslavia and Serbia and Montenegro teams. History <inaudible> 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 Kingdom of Yugoslavia The first national team was in the kingdom that existed between the two world wars. The football federation of what was then the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was founded in Zagreb in 1919 under the name Jugoslavenski Nogometni Savez and admitted into FIFA, and the national team played its first international game at the Summer Olympics in Antwerp in 1920. The opponent was Czechoslovakia, and the historic starting eleven that represented Kingdom of SCS on its debut were, Dragutin Verduka, Vekoslav Zapanzik, Jaroslav Seifer, Stanko Taucher, Slavin Sindrik, Rudolf Rupets, Dragutin Vragovic and Jovan Ružić. They lost by a large margin, 0–7, but nonetheless entered their names in the history books. In 1929, the country was renamed to Yugoslavia and the football association became Futbolski Savez Jugoslavi and moved its headquarters to Belgrade. The national team participated at the 1930 FIFA World Cup, finishing in third place. In its first ever World Cup match in Montevideo's Park Central, Yugoslavia managed a famous 2–1 win versus Mighty Brazil, with the following starting eleven representing the country, Milovan Jaksic, Bronislav Sikulic, Aleksandr Tirnanik, Militan Ivkovic, Ivica Bek, Momčilo Dokic, Blagoj Marjanovic, Milorad Arsenijevic, Dord Vujadinovic, Dragoslav Mihailovic, and Lubisa Stefanovic. The national team consisted of players based in Serbian football clubs, while the Zagreb Subassociation forbid players from Croatian clubs to play in the World Cup due to the relocation of the Football Association's headquarters from Zagreb to Belgrade. Socialist Yugoslavia The federation and football overall was disrupted by World War II. After the war, a socialist federation was formed and the football federation reconstituted. Topic: <inaudible> Silver medal at 1948 and 1952 Olympics. Yugoslavia began their football campaign by defeating Luxembourg 6 to 1 with five different players scoring the goals. In the quarter-finals and the semi-finals, they would take out Turkey and Great Britain by the same score of 3–1. In the final though, they would lose to Sweden, having a team with many players from the 1948 generation, Yugoslavia was a formidable side at the 1952 Summer Olympics and finished as runners-up behind the legendary Hungary national team. Against the Soviet Union, Yugoslavia was 5–1 up with 15 minutes of their first round match to go. The Yugoslavs, understandably, put their feet up. Arthur Ellis, the match referee, recorded what happened next in his book, The Final Whistle London, 1963. The USSR forced the most honorable draw ever recorded. 
Sevalid Bobrov, their captain, scored a magnificent hat-trick. After the Soviet Union had reduced the lead to 5–2, he, almost single-handed, took the score to 5–5, scoring his third in the last minute. For once, use of the word sensational was justified. Although Bobrov's early goal in their replay presaged a miraculous recovery, Yugoslavia recovered sufficiently to put out their opponents easily in the second half. Topic. 1960s through 1980s Yugoslavia organized the 1976 European Championship played in Belgrade and Zagreb. The national team participated in eight World Cups and four Euros, and won the Olympic football tournament in 1960 at the Summer Games they also finished second three times and third once. 1980s. Dissolution of Yugoslavia and UN sanctions With the end of the Cold War, democratic principles were introduced to the country which brought about the end of Titoist rule. In the subsequent atmosphere, national tensions were heightened. At the Yugoslavia Netherlands friendly in preparation for the 1990 World Cup, the Croatian crowd in Zagreb jeered the Yugoslav team and anthem and waved Dutch flags owing to its resemblance to the Croatian tricolor. With the dissolution of Yugoslavia, the team split up and the remaining team of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was banned from competing at Euro 92. The decision was made on 31 May 1992, just ten days before the competition commenced. They had finished top of their qualifying group, but were unable to play in the competition due to United Nations Security Council Resolution 757. Their place was taken by Denmark, who went on to win the competition. Yugoslavia had also been drawn as the top seed in Group 5 of the European Zone in the qualifying tournament for the 1994 World Cup. Fry was barred from competing, rendering the group unusually weak. 1990s. Serbia and Montenegro Although the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, consisting of Serbia and Montenegro, was formed on 27 April 1992, its teams were banned from all international sporting events, including the national football team. Consequently, the national team did not play its first game as a new country before 23 December 1994, a friendly match played in Porto Alegre and in which Brazil won 2–0. This was the first ever team composed of Serbian and Montenegrin players exclusively, while Slobodan Santrak, a former Yugoslavia national team player, was named the team's first ever manager. The next game was played three days later, this time in Buenos Aires, resulting in a 1–0 loss to Argentina. Also due to the United Nations international sanctions, the team could not participate in 1994 World Cup qualifying nor the Euro 1996 qualifying process. On 31 March 1995, the team recorded its first official win in history, a 1–0 friendly against Uruguay, simultaneously marking the team's first ever home game, played at Stadion Cervena Zvezda in Belgrade, and the first ever goal scored, courtesy of Savo Milosevic. Slightly more than one year later, the team recorded its first ever win in a World Cup qualifying tournament in its first game in such a tournament, a 3–1 win over the Faroe Islands. Shortly after, the team also recorded its biggest win in history, once again against the Faroe Islands, 8–1. Yugoslavia finished second in Group 6, just behind Spain, meaning it had to go through the playoff system in order to qualify. Yugoslavia was paired up with Hungary, and what was believed would be a tough match turned out to be an easy win for Yugoslavia, 7–1 in Budapest and 5–0 in Belgrade, for an aggregate score of 12–1. This was enough to secure Yugoslavia its first ever World Cup appearance as a new country. The 1998 World Cup seeding had Yugoslavia ranked in 21st position, but the Yugoslavia national team went to France as one of the shadow favourites for the World Cup. The New York Times stated that Yugoslavia could easily be a semi-finalist in that year's World Cup. The justification for such an estimation was partially found in the names of the Yugoslav players, members of great European teams and proven footballers. The draw put the team in Group F alongside Germany, the United States, and Iran. 
Yugoslavia won its first game 1–0 against Iran thanks to a goal from defender Sinisa Mihailovic. The next game was a draw for Yugoslavia. After leading Germany 2–0, last game's hero, Mihailovic, scored an unlucky own goal following a German freekick, and Oliver Bierhoff equalised at 2–2 with only about 10 minutes to the match. Nonetheless, Yugoslavia responded in the next game against the United States and won 1–0 due to an early goal in Nantes. Yugoslavia made easy work of Group 6, but despite an excellent record, the game against Germany would prove costly as Germany won the group thanks to a better goal difference. Due to their second position, Yugoslavia saw itself face the Netherlands in the round of 16. Yugoslavia entered in the match with a sole attacker, but its defensive tactics proved unsuccessful as Dennis Bergkamp put the Netherlands in front in the 38th minute. Immediately following the start of the second half, Yugoslavia pressured the Dutch, who inevitably conceded a header from Slobodan Kamljanovic. However, the turning point of this match was a penalty awarded to Yugoslavia after Vladimir Jugovic was fouled in the penalty area. Predrag Mijatovic's shot dazzled Edwin van der Sar, but not the crossbar, and the scoreline remained the same at 1–1. Such an event demoralized the Yugoslavs, as the Dutch took the initiative. In the late seconds of the game, as everybody was preparing for extra time, Edgar Davids shot towards the Yugoslav net from a distance of 20 metres and beat goalkeeper Ivica Kralj, to the pure disbelief of the Yugoslav players and fans. This marked the end of Yugoslavia's run in the 1998 World Cup, since there was not much time left to do anything. Unlucky events forced Yugoslavia out of the tournament, but the team definitely demonstrated its great ability and proved it had a spot among the world's best teams. This was also reflected in the FIFA World Rankings following the 1998 FIFA World Cup, in which Yugoslavia was constantly ranked in the top 10 for a long period of time. Euro 2000 The draw for the Euro 2000 qualifiers saw many eyebrows raised as first-seeded Yugoslavia was drawn in a group with Croatia, thus marking the first games between the two teams after the breakup of Yugoslavia. The other teams in the group were the Republic of Ireland, Macedonia, and Malta. When the qualifiers began, the coach was Milan Zividinovic, but in July 1999 he resigned and was replaced by Vujadin Boskov. The team started with a 1–0 win over Ireland in Belgrade, before beating Malta 3–0 in Takkali. The home fixture against the Maltese followed, but was moved to Thessaloniki, Greece due to the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia. The team nonetheless won 4–1. The first, highly anticipated match against Croatia took place in Belgrade shortly after the bombing ended, and was interrupted due to a power outage at the beginning of the second half, resuming after 43 minutes and eventually finishing 0–0. A 2–1 defeat against Ireland in Dublin was followed by victories home and away against Macedonia 3–1 and 4–2 respectively, meaning that Yugoslavia needed to win its final qualifier against Croatia in Zagreb, or to draw with Ireland failing to beat Macedonia in Skopje, in order to qualify automatically for Euro 2000. In the event, Ireland conceded an injury time equaliser, meaning that Yugoslavia's 2–2 draw with the Croatians was good enough. The draw for the finals placed Yugoslavia in Group C along with Spain, Norway and another former Yugoslav Republic, Slovenia. The Slovenians took a surprise 3–0 lead in the first game at the Stade du Pays de Charleroi, but three goals in six second half minutes enabled Yugoslavia to secure a 3–3 draw. The team then beat Norway 1–0 in Liege, thanks to an early Savo Milosevic backheel strike. The final group game, against Spain in Bruges, saw the Yugoslavs take the lead three times, before a Gaiska Mendita penalty and an Alfonso strike in injury time secured a dramatic 4–3 win for the Spaniards and top spot in the group. Yugoslavia nonetheless finished second, level on points with Norway but ranked ahead due to its victory in Liege. In each of the three games, the team had one player sent off Sinisa Mihailovic, Mateja Kesman, and Slaviza Jakanovic, respectively. In the quarter-finals, Yugoslavia was once again paired with the Netherlands. Unlike the last time, the co-hosts made easy work of Yugoslavia, winning 6–1 in Rotterdam with Patrick Kluivert scoring a hat-trick. Savo Milosevic was crowned the joint top scorer of the tournament, alongside Patrick Kluivert. Both players scored five goals, although Milosevic played one game fewer. 
2002 World Cup The 2002 qualifiers marked the first time that Yugoslavia failed to reach a major tournament ever since its return to the big stage after the UN sanctions. The problems started with the major political turmoil in the country as well in the Yugoslav FA, which prompted the new coach Ilya Petkovic to resign only after one game away victory against Luxembourg. Milovan Doric took over the team, but under his leadership, the team managed only two draws 1 1 at home versus Switzerland and also 1 1 away in Slovenia. In both games, the opponents managed to equalize in late stages of the game and a 0 1 home loss to Russia, which marked the team's first home defeat in official matches. After Oric's resignation, a three man commission, consisting of Dejan Savicevic, Vujadin Boskov, and Ivan Kirkovic, took over the coaching duties, until Savicevic ultimately took over on his own. The team managed to bounce back with a draw in Russia and a win in Switzerland, but failed to defeat Slovenia in the penultimate game, thus ended the qualifiers in third position. <laughs> 2006 World Cup After Savicevic's disastrous spell as coach of Yugoslavia, the country went under a political transformation, and Ilya Petkovic became the newly named Serbia and Montenegro's new coach. Initially, the team under his lead experienced dragging failure in the Euro 2004 qualifiers while competing for the first time as Serbia and Montenegro. Despite drawing both games against group favourites and eventual group winners Italy and winning both games against runners-up Wales, Serbia and Montenegro failed to qualify, mostly due to an embarrassing 2–2 home draw and 2–1 away loss to Azerbaijan. Qualifying for the 2006 World Cup, however, was different. Serbia and Montenegro began the campaign by finishing first with an undefeated record in their qualification group ahead of favourites Spain. The Serbia and Montenegro team also allowed only one goal in the ten matches, the best defensive record of all 51 teams participating in qualification. For the 2006 qualifiers, Serbia and Montenegro was drawn in a group with Spain, Belgium, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Lithuania and San Marino. Led once again by Ilya Petkovic as coach, Serbia and Montenegro played some impressive defensive football—the famous four. Defence, consisting of Nemanja Vidic, Miladin Krstajic, Goran Gavrancic, and Ivica Dragutinovic, with Dragoslav Jevrik as goalkeeper, conceded only one goal in ten games, finishing first with a 6-4-0 record, ahead of Spain. On 3 June 2006, following a referendum, Montenegro declared its independence from Serbia. As the World Cup was about to start, it was decided that the Serbia and Montenegro team that had qualified for the tournament would compete, with the split into separate teams representing the new countries of Montenegro and Serbia to take place once the team was no longer in the tournament. In the group stage, Serbia and Montenegro lost their opening game to joint group favourite, the Netherlands. The final score was 1–0 after Arjen Robin scored the only goal of the game. They also lost their second game to Argentina 6–0, Serbia and Montenegro's worst ever international result. With the team's two losses and with Netherlands and Argentina winning both their games, Serbia and Montenegro could no longer qualify for the knockout matches, and was playing for pride alone in their final group game against Ivory Coast. Despite having a 2–0 lead for much of the first half, the Elephants managed to come back and win 3–2, leaving Serbia and Montenegro with a disappointing 0–0–3 World Cup run. 2006 Serbia After Montenegro declared independence, Serbia marked their split from Montenegro with a 3–1 win over the Czech Republic. The Euro 2008 qualification process began not long after in 2007 and ended in disappointment for Serbia. A strong start in qualification was overshadowed by the final hurdle of matches where inconsistency took over, the side dropping points against the likes of Finland, Belgium, Armenia and Kazakhstan. They eventually finished third, three points behind runners-up Portugal and Group A winners Poland. Serbia's first ever foreign coach Javier Clemente was sacked after the failure. Serbia replaced Clementi with Miroslav Dukic, who then left the position on 19 August of the following year without having played any official games, due to various disagreements with the Football Association of Serbia. 2010 World Cup 
Subsequent to Yukik's rapid departure, Radimir Antic was appointed coach and success followed. Serbia's World Cup qualification campaign began in 2008. Their qualification group featured former World Cup winners and 2006 FIFA World Cup runners-up France, traditionally powerful Romania, as well as Austria, Lithuania and the Faroe Islands. Serbia played consistently during the qualifiers and this led to the team automatically qualifying for the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. They confirmed qualification with a commanding 5–0 win at home against Romania. Like in 2006, Serbia went into the 2010 FIFA World Cup as the dark horses of the tournament. Key points justifying their potential surprise team status included a star-studded defence that was composed by Nemanja Vidic, Nevin Subodic, Aleksandr Kolarov and Bronislav Ivanovic. The captain of Serbia's 2010 World Cup campaign was stalwart Dejan Stankovic, who became the only player to feature in a World Cup having played under three different national names although he never changed nationality, this was a result of geopolitical events involving the identity of Yugoslavia. In their first tournament as an independent nation, they were to face Ghana, Germany and Australia. Their opening group game was against Ghana and chances came to both sides but a red card to Aleksandr Lukovic and a handball by substitute Stravko Kuzmanovic in the second half gave Ghana a penalty to take all three points at the death. Asamoa Gyan converted eight minutes from full time and Serbia were defeated 1–0. In Serbia's second group match, they sensationally defeated Germany by a score of 1–0 with an acrobatic goal by Milan Jovanovic late in the first half. FIFA's official YouTube channel called the win, "...the most famous day in Serbia's footballing history." Serbia only needed a single point to reach the knockout stages but were defeated by Australia 2–1 in an entertaining match where Serbia's dominance in the first half and in periods of the second half would have made it look like a Serbia victory. Australia scored two goals in the second half through Tim Cahill and Brett Hallman. A late Marko Pandalic goal served only as a consolation. They finished last in the group. Radimir Antic was sacked two games into the Euro 2012 qualification process, a 1–1 draw at home to Slovenia spelling the end to his two-year stint. The sacking meant the bringing in of Vladimir Petrovic to the job. Euro 2012 campaign Serbia once again failed to qualify for the European Championships, making it 12 years since the country last took part in the tournament. Serbia was drawn in qualification Group C featuring Italy, Slovenia, Estonia, Northern Ireland and the Faroe Islands. The qualifying stage began with Radimir Antic as coach and finished with Vladimir Petrovic. Serbia and Antic started the first two games positively with a 3–0 win away to Faroe Islands and a 1–1 draw at home to Slovenia but this result brought the end of Antic's reign as the country's coach. New coach Petrovic faced setbacks immediately with an embarrassing 3–1 loss at home to Estonia and an abandoned match resulting in a 3–0 loss to Italy due to crowd trouble from the Serbian away supporters in Genoa. Serbia returned to form with a 2–1 win at home over Northern Ireland but could only manage a 1–1 draw away to Estonia. Afterwards, Serbia won back-to-back -back games with a 1–0 win away to Northern Ireland and a crucial 3–1 win at home against Faroe Islands. These results put Serbia in pole position to confirm a playoff spot behind Italy. Serbia needed a win at home against Italy to confirm a playoff spot but their efforts only resulted in a 1–1 draw. The team, however, still had one more chance to confirm a playoff place when they faced Slovenia away. This game was a must win even though Serbia had a superior goal difference over Estonia, a draw was not good enough for progression. Serbia played positively and created a number of chances during the game but a long-range goal put Slovenia up 1–0 at half-time. The Serbians then failed to convert numerous chances that they had in the second half, notably Nemanja Vidic's penalty miss midway through the second half. Serbia left empty-handed after a 1–0 loss and exited the tournament for the third time in a row during the qualifying group stages, missing out by one point behind Estonia. Vladimir Petrovic was sacked after the team's failure to qualify. <laughs> 2014 World Cup campaign Dejan Stankovic and Nemanja Vidic announced that they were retiring from international football. 
This meant that Serbia had lost two key players and that a new era had started. Bronislav Ivanovic became the new captain. Sinisa Mihailovic, a former member of the national team, was appointed as the coach on 24 April 2012. Serbia was drawn in Group A in qualification for 2014 FIFA World Cup, together with Croatia, Belgium, Scotland, Macedonia, and Wales. The team began the qualification campaign with a goalless draw with Scotland and a 6–1 win over Wales. In the next two games, Serbia suffered two defeats, from Macedonia and Belgium. In 2013, on of March, Serbia played in Zagreb against Croatia. The game was highly anticipated in both countries due to their rivalry both on and off the pitch. Croatia won 2–0 and sent Serbia down on the table. Serbia then defeated Scotland 2–0 at home in a crucial qualifier, though their World Cup hopes were taken away after a 2–1 defeat to Belgium. Serbia drew with Croatia 1–1 in the corresponding fixture at home in a spiteful affair, where 18-year-old Aleksandar Mitrovic scored an equaliser in the second half after Mario Mandzukic opened the scoring. They then defeated Wales 0–3 in Cardiff. Dejan Stankovic's farewell game was completed in a friendly against Japan, which Serbia won 2–0. He finished his career with 103 appearances for the national team, a record previously held by Savo Milosevic, with 102 appearances. Serbia finished qualifying with a 5–1 home win against Macedonia, putting them in third in the group, three points from a playoff spot behind Croatia and group winners Belgium. Euro 2016 campaign Serbia once again failed to qualify for the European Championships, making it 16 years since the country last took part in the tournament. Dick Advocat was appointed as the coach in 2014. Serbia was drawn in Group 1 in qualification for UEFA Euro 2016, together with Portugal, Denmark, Albania and Armenia. Advocat started with a draw in a friendly 1–1 game against France. The team began qualification with a 1–1 draw against Armenia. In the next abandoned game against Albania in Belgrade, Serbia was originally awarded with a 3–0 victory, but was later deducted three points. On 14 November 2014, Serbia played against Denmark in Belgrade and lost, 1–3. After this game, Advocat left, whereupon Radovan Kirkuk was announced as a new coach on 18 November. In 2015, Serbia's first match was a qualifying match against Portugal in Lisbon, during which Serbia lost 2–1, cutting their chances for qualification to Euro 2016. On 13 June 2015, Serbia played a qualifying match against Denmark in Copenhagen, losing 2–0. On 10 July, the Court of Arbitration for Sport announced that it had awarded a 0–3 victory to Albania in the abandoned match held on 14 October 2014, upholding Serbia's three-point penalisation. As a result, Serbia became mathematically eliminated from Euro 2016 qualification. On 4 September 2015, Serbia made first victory in this qualification 2–0, against Armenia. On 8 October 2015, Serbia made a spectacular victory against Albania. Serbia beat Albania on Elbasan Arena thanks to Aleksandar Kolarov and Adem Lajic goals in injury time 2 -0. In the table of Group 1, Serbia finished second to last place with four points in a five-team group. <laughs> 2018 World Cup – Return Serbia were drawn with Euro 2016 semi-finalists Wales, Austria, Ireland, Georgia and Moldova. They started off their campaign with a 2–2 draw against Ireland at the Rijko Midic Stadium and continued this good form with wins over Austria, Georgia, Moldova. Serbia beat Moldova in Belgrade with goals from Aleksandar Kolarov, Aleksandar Mitrovic and Majat Gacinovic. This consolidated their first position going into their top of the group clash with Ireland. They won this match with a 55th-minute goal from Kolarov. Serbia finished with a 1–0 home win against Georgia, and ended top of Group D and therefore qualified for the 2018 tournament, its first major tournament after an eight-year absence. In the World Cup, Serbia opened their match against Costa Rica, the team that four years ago had stunned big teams like Uruguay, Italy and England. 
Despite of Costa Rica's historic achievement four years ago, Kolarov's superb free kick at the second half had made Costa Rica to suffer not just their first defeat since 2006 World Cup, but it is also a historic win for Serbia after eight years. However, Serbia performed poorly in their later encounters, losing 1–2 to Switzerland on a 90-minute goal and 0–2 to Brazil, thus once again eliminated from the group stage of a big tournament. Serbia's elimination came out as for the result of lacking experience, since most of Serbia's squad has not played in any big tournaments for eight years. Rivalries Serbia has a fierce rivalry with Croatia. This rivalry stems from political roots, and is listed as one of the ten greatest international rivalries by Goal.com and as the most politically charged football rivalry by the Bleacher Report. The two sides have a politically turbulent history, which started this rivalry in the 1990s. Both were part of Yugoslavia, which dissolved after war broke out between the constituent republics, including Serbia and Croatia. The two nations have played four times, with Croatia winning one and drawing the other three games. Team image Nicknames When Serbia played its first international match as a resurrected national team against the Czech Republic, the team is called the Orlovi Eagles. The name refers to the white double-headed eagle found on the coat of arms of Serbia, a national symbol of Serbia and Serbs. Kit sponsorship In July 2014, a partnership was announced between the Football Association of Serbia and English manufacturer Umbro which is Serbia's official supplier before Puma took over with their home and away kits, debuting 7 September 2014 in the friendly match against France. On 7 September 2014, Serbia unveiled their latest kits also worn at the UEFA Euro 2016 qualifiers campaign. Record in major tournaments The Football Association of Serbia is deemed the direct successor to both SFR Yugoslavia and Serbia and Montenegro by FIFA, and therefore the inheritor to all the records of the defunct nations. FIFA World Cup FIFA World Cup qualification in Temple Asterisk draw for 1994 FIFA World Cup qualifiers was made on 8 December 1991, however due to breakup of Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and consequent military conflict, which broke in early 1991, FSJ ceased to exist as football organization of the SFR Yugoslavia. Organization that remained based in Belgrade, Serbia, was excluded from taking part as FSJ or its successor due to UN sanctions. <laughs> UEFA European Championship UEFA European Championship qualifying in Temple <laughs> UEFA Nations League record Last update, the twentieth of November, twenty eighteen. Topic Recent results and forthcoming fixtures. For more results, see Serbia national football team results. Topic Head to head records, two thousand six onward. As of the twentieth of November, twenty eighteen. Topic Head coaches. As of the twentieth of November, twenty eighteen, for the period before nineteen ninety two, C Yugoslavia national football team hashtag head coaches. Topic Current coaching staff. As of the 3rd of September 2018.
Topic: Players. Topic: Current squad. The following players were called up for UEFA Nations League games against Montenegro and Lithuania on the 17th of November and the 20th of November 2018. Caps and goals updated as of the 20th of November 2018 after the game against Lithuania. Topic: Recent call-ups. The following players have been called up for the team in the last 12 months. Topic: Previous squads. Topic: Player statistics. Topic: Most capped players. As of the 17th of November 2018. Topic: Top goalscorers. As of November 17, 2018. Topic: Captains after 1994. Topic: Notable players. Topic Honors FIFA World Cup Semi final nineteen thirty Fourth place nineteen sixty two UEFA European Championship Runners up nineteen sixty nineteen sixty eight Summer Olympics Gold medal nineteen sixty Silver medal nineteen forty eight nineteen fifty two nineteen fifty six Bronze medal, 1984 Mediterranean Games Winners, 1971, 1979 See also Serbia national football team results Serbia national under-23 football team Serbia national under-21 football team Serbia national under 20 football team Serbia national under 19 football team Serbia national under 17 football team List of Serbia international footballers including predecessor teams Yugoslavia national football team <laughs>